Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. Uh, and welcome uh, back to uh, our technical track. We have three talks. We had a late, uh, late change. Uh, Basil has unfortunately is ill, and we're very happy that Ian Kong can uh, uh, fill the slot. Uh, so we start first with uh, uh, Francesco Jose Vial Prado from Fortnix. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, and he studied at the Ecole Polytechnique in Paris and holds a PhD in cryptography from the Université Paris Saclay obtained under supervision of Professor Louis Goubert. He currently works at Fortinix, where his work in research focuses in applied cryptography, post-quantum cryptography, and secure implementations. And he will give a talk about uh, the Kali uh, Maiden uh, uh, signatures, uh, lighter, faster key generation. Floor is yours. Thanks, Mark, for the introduction. Um, Yes, it works. Great. However, it, it looks also PowerPointed again. Let's see uh, how the diagrams look. Well. Yeah, hi, everyone. I wanted to speak about LMS this session. Um, I'm Francisco Jose Vialprado, <laughs> but you pronounce it very well as well. <laughs> I work at Fortanix as a senior cryptography engineer. So uh, in this talk, uh, we'll be giving an introduction to LMS and a bit of a dissection of this LMS algorithm. And in that process, we'll highlight uh, two uh, optimizations that are not difficult, but uh, there, this is a new angle that, I mean, it's not new, but it's an angle that it's not explored much and not discussed about because everyone else is speaking about the, the state, right? The, the state that you need to manage when you're, you're dealing with these uh, signature schemes. Um, you can also go back in time and see Folker stuck before lunch, stateful hash-based uh, signature schemes, unless, of course, your name is Tom Cruise or Bill Murray, in which case you have to die. <laughs> um, yeah, so not in this talk. We will we'll, we'll not discuss the state management and interoperability and well-known export restrictions, uh, so we'll, we'll, focus, we'll focus more on the hash-based part. Yes, yeah, so LMS uh, is a stateful hash-based signature scheme. And as I just said, let's focus in the easy part, the hash-based part. So this is true. When you're generating a key, it requires a lot of hashing. When you're signing a message, it requires hashing again. Actually, you're repeating kind of the, the work. And also when verifying a signature, hashing again. It's not a surprise. Uh, and also there is an internal state that uh, upon on, well, before releasing a signature and upon signing your you're supposed to to update so this state must evolve and it typically is so one counter per LMS key um, and uh, if you want um, well as, as you as you know these keys has these keys have a limited capacity and you can augment this capacity by organizing these keys into several uh, level structure uh, but uh, we're, we're not going to focus on, on that part a lot in this talk so first, uh, some numbers. Uh, this is how LMS keys are organized. On the, on the left, you see, uh, well, I see that the, the, the presentation is PowerPointed, but uh, we'll see if uh, the diagrams. Uh, um, for now, it's fine. We'll see if, uh, if it becomes an issue, no problem. So in the left, you have a number of uh, one-time signature keys. Um, and once you have, uh, lot of these keys, uh, 2 to the h, where h is some, some number that's it's the height of a, of a tree. Uh, and let me state here that this can be actually a lot. Uh, for the largest parameter set, this can be 2 to the 25 keys. You can put that together and form one LMS key. And then you can take several of these LMS keys, up to eight, and you can organize this, uh, organize this case into, into this structure that allows to augment capacity. So these are the amount of signatures that you can, you can emit with one with each key type so one signature for the one time signature key uh, two to the eight signatures because you're collecting that amount of keys with a one lms key and uh, then you 
when you put these keys together, you can uh, drastically augment the capacity in an HSS key, right? And uh, what about hashing? So uh, when you want to generate a single LM OTS key, you're supposed to do that amount of hashes. I mean, this is for a common parameter set. You can trade off a bit there. Uh, once you have uh, that keys and you repeat this, this procedure two to the H times, uh, you can form one LMS key and then you need to emit some signatures in order to put them in this structure, right? So as you can see here, um, that's a lot of hashing. Great, so this will be our, uh, our master diagram for representation. This is one LMS key. Uh, as you can see, it, it has this tree structure that Volker already addressed in the previous presentation. Um, as you can see, you have this seed below. Uh, from that seed, you can generate each one of these uh, uh, of these LM OTS keys. In order to get to each public key of a single LM OTS key, you need that amount of hashes, uh, almost 9,000 9, hashes, to get to each leaf. On one, once you have all the leaves computed, you can start uh, hashing above and eventually get to the to the first node that's up there, which is your public key, right? So already from this picture, we, we understand that we, we need every every leaf in order to obtain the public key, right? And, and if you if you start counting, it, it, it's a lot of hashing and a lot of uh, of bytes, right? Uh, and as you all know, there's a state. Uh, in this case, in this particular key, we are, we already signed up with a bunch of keys, and we're focusing on this state right here, right? The, the, the secret key twenty two. Um, so the implementer has to deal with the hashing again. They have to deal with the with the state. So they have to know that the, this key is uh, using this particular leaf, and they, you should not use the previous leaf. Um, and you also need to hash all, all the way up to get to the root. So since we're speaking about this, let's zoom in into that part, that that red re uh, rectangle that you see there, and uh, see uh, the, the leaf calculation. So how to get from this. Uh, secret key, secret LM OTS key up to this, uh, its corresponding public key. And as I said, it involves a lot of hashing. So um, I, I just took that uh, from the tree. I'll put that again later. And um, yeah, this is what actually happens in uh, w when you're trying to uh, compute a single leaf of the tree. You have this, um, this secret key, which is actually uh, several 32 byte collection, so 34 uh, collections of 32 bytes each, and you will hash them sequ sequentially 255 times. Again, this is for a set of for a common set of parameters. And once you, you're in the right part of this diagram, you will hash vertically the, uh, each element sequentially. You will hash again, and you get the the public key. So there's that magic here. You're just hashing a lot sequentially, and then uh, vertically, and then you get this uh, 22. Uh, yeah, so this is again to obtain a single leaf of the of the whole tree, a process that must be repeated uh, an amount of times. So if you count the, the hashes here, uh, you, it's uh, for the common set of parameters nine nine thousand or more or less nine thousand hash calculations. Uh, yeah, so our first obvious observation here is that okay, uh, let's try to hash uh, several lines in in parallel. Uh, uh, for that, you would need an implementation of a uh, SHA two five six in in the, in the way of single instruction multiple data. And it turns out that it's easy uh, because the internal state of, uh, of SHA-256 can be represented with an amount of bytes, but the, um, the word of uh, the bit operations you're performing in SHA-256 is 32-bit. Uh, so you can manage to, to, to use larger bit collection and intrinsics and parallelize an, in uh, SHA-256 in a number of lanes. Right, because it only uses a bit shift rotation and wrapping addition. It doesn't. You don't need the polynomials or, or elliptic curves. Right. So uh, with a, with a SIMD implementation implementation of SHA two five six, you can compute several hash uh, several independent uh, hash values in one go. Right. Uh, this value I'll call it lanes uh, because it varies in your architecture or, or whatever you're after. So going back to the previous. Uh, Diagram. Now we know that we can hash, uh, in this case, four uh, values each time. So that already give, gives you a, a good uh, optimization there. 
So when before you had to do these 9,000 hashes, you will now divide by the, lam the number of lanes uh, that your SHA-256 implementation has. And if you, if you have multiple threads, you can also uh, take several of these at the same time, putting in several threads and, and reduce the amount of uh, hash computations. So since we're speaking about this, uh, let's give a quick word. Uh, Folker already addressed this, but about the signatures here. So again, still focusing on one particular leaf. In order to sign, you will reveal parts of this, uh, I mean, intermediate uh, values of this uh, hash computation. You will reveal, reveal that to the verifier. The verifier, the verifier will start from there and will hash again and again, and, and then we'll, they, they will go up the tree. Right? And what's interesting is that the message dependency in all the signature process ends here. There, there is no, in the later parts of, a, of the signature, where you're going up the tree, there is no more a secret key nor message dependency, right? So everything else is completely public. Uh, so one, once the verifier gets to the leaf, you need to give this so-called authentication path, which is the, the sibling and the uncles of the of this particular leaf, leaf number twenty two. Right. So the, the signer in the at this moment they need to provide the the uncles and they need to get them from somewhere. Right. Okay. Uh, so now let's discuss now um, the the process of obtaining the, the the root of this tree, because if you count there, you will have a lot of leaves and. It, a naive approach of obtaining a whole level uh, and then hashing that level into the, the previous level and get to the root uh, asks for a lot of memory, of course. So what you would want is, uh, is an iterative algorithm that uh, gets, you, gets you to the root uh, fast enough and without uh, much memory, right? And for this, the RFC contains the, the iterative algorithm that you might be imagining, which is as follows. You, you take the first leaf, which you already computed with the 9,000 hashes, uh, you take a second leaf, and as soon as you can hash, you, you will concatenate them and hash above, right? So in this case, I can already obtain the, the, the node number three. Uh, you get another leaf, another leaf. Oh, I can hash, so I can I'll hash. And oh, I can hash again, so I'll hash. And all the previous nodes, I will just forget them. I don't need them anymore, right? So we will just keep this process going. Leaf number eight, nine. Oh, I can hash, I'll hash, etc. And with this process, you can get to the root uh, with, a, with a small stack of hashes. You only need to remember h minus 1 hashes in order to get to the root. So you, you can compute the root without having to store these huge levels. Again, the, for, for the largest parameter sets, uh, the, uh, the height of this tree is 25. So in the bottom, you have 2 to the 25 leaves. So we only. Yeah, with uh, 768 bytes for the largest parameter set, you can get to the root uh, without much memory and, and fast enough. So this is the pseudocode from, for that algorithm. It's in the RFC, almost verbatim. As you can see, there is a for loop that uh, is it's, uh, looping through the leaves. And for each leaf, you will look above. And as soon as you can hash, you will. And in, in the end of this process, you will have only one element in your data stack, which will be the, the public key, right? So as a second observation, let's try to, to do this same algorithm, but uh, taking advantage of the SIMD instruction, the SIMD hashing. Uh, so we want to do the same, but less sequentially. So we, we would want to connect more leaves and more nodes. And, and as soon as we have the good amount of nodes, we will, uh, we will hash in SIMD. So with, with uh, computing, in this case, four hashes in one go. So I will label the nodes so that they can reflect this. But uh, the, the algorithm is as, as you would imagine. You will get lanes uh, nodes together. So in this case, four. Uh, I cannot hash anymore because, sorry, I cannot hash yet because it would be a waste. I can, I can make four hashes, uh, four hash computations in one go. And in order to get to nine and 10 here, that's only two hash computations. So I'll just take another uh, four nodes for leaves. And now I will, ha I will hash because I can, I need to compute four hashes there, so I'll, I'll, I'll just do that in one go. And I get to, to these four nodes there. And again, I'll, I will take the four next leaves, etc. And now I can hash. 
So I'll hash there. Now I have eight contiguous nodes, so I need to compute four hashes again, and I'll hash that, etc. And I will forget every, every node that is uh, already used here. So this is uh, the, the same algorithm as before, but it's using the SIMD uh, hashing. And it will get you to the root uh, faster than before. Of course, you need a bit more memory because now each element of your stack is uh, an array, a vector of array of, of some nodes, right? instead of only one element. So you just multiply the previous seven, six, eight bytes but by the number of lanes that you have, and you will get uh, the, the memory needed for this stack, which is uh, very low as well. And just for completeness, this is the, the pseudo code for the previous algorithm. You just, uh, now you're, you're looping uh, through lanes, leaves, and your hash functions here, they have um, these ranges. So you, where, where before you, you were hashing R, which is an index, you will hash R, R plus one, R plus two, R plus two, et cetera, up to R plus lanes minus one. And when you've done with, with, this, uh, with this code, you, you will be at, at a certain level when it becomes uh, a waste to continue hashing SIMD, so you can keep going sequentially from there. It's, very on the, it's on the top of the tree, so it doesn't matter. Right, so let's look at, the, at these numbers again with these uh, two insights. And this is where the, yeah, the presentation got PowerPointed, but these are uh, our uh, floor functions uh, and sealed. Uh, uh, last two signatures, and for each node in the tree, you can actually come up with a recurrence relation. If you like that, solve it, and you have the lifetime of each node in the tree. So if we're coming up with an algorithm that, um, that remembers parts of the tree, you want to make sure that that algorithm respects the lifetime of each node, and the, the, signet, the signer all, always has the, the correct node at the, at the correct time, and it's not wasting memory. So for this, we have uh, the small memory Leighton Michali schemes. Uh, these uh, algorithms were encumbered by a patent that was expired in 2013, so we can speak about this now. Um, and they actually implement the, the, the thing that I, I just said. You, you won't remember the whole tree because you need only parts of it at a given moment. Um, yeah. And the idea of this, uh, these schemes is that you start with an initial state and you, you will do things upon signature. You won't hash a lot. You, you will just hash as needed and then you will, will, will uh, keep uh, moving the trees and, uh, and having the correct notes at the correct time. Uh, so this is the same tree as before, but just to put things in perspective, I indented to the left. As you can see, the, the bottom uh, four levels don't even match my, my very large screen. Um, yeah, so... Uh, you can imagine that this corresponds to the two gigabytes of information that we had before for the, for the 25 level. Um, yeah. So the, the algorithm is, is very easy. It goes as follows. You will remember the top, uh, the half top of the tree entirely. That is manageable. And then for the, for the other leaves, you will remember parts of it. Only, only parts of it. And then uh, for, the, for the leaves, you will remember some amount of extra leaves. So it looks like this. Now it fits on my screen. I will remember the top uh, levels entirely. And starting from that, uh, from that level, that blue level there, I will just remember some nodes, right? And the leaves will, will get these five extra leaves. And the idea is um, whenever we are signing with, with, at each signature, we'll, we will add one extra leaf. So sliding the, the bottom wi wi uh, node window to the right. And as soon as we see a free branch that we can hash, we will. Uh, so we, we will slide potentially some upper blue levels to the right as well. And we will forget nodes uh, that, that, that we know because of their lifetime that we're not going to need them. So this is, uh, this is the small memory later Michaelis schemes. Now, uh, let's have a quick word about state. In this case, state is not a counter anymore. You need to remember, well, the counter, but also the, the set of cached nodes. If you, if you lose these cached nodes, that's not a problem. You can compute them again. So that's, no, that's, that's not an issue, but we can say that the state is now the counter plus the cached set of nodes and these sliding windows. But this, um, for, for the largest set of parameters that we had before, the two gigabytes, 
This reduces to one megabyte for the largest set parameters and SHA-256. Great, so let's put all together. Uh, when you're generating the keys, you should use uh, SIMD and multi-threading to compute the leaves, that, which is the, the most uh, consuming operation. Um, when you have the, the public key of all the leaves, you can get to the root faster using SIMD again and multi-threading. And on that process, uh, you will retain the, the nodes given by the small memory algorithm, the, the blue levels that were on the left, and you will forget everything else. You will recompute that again later. And when you're signing, uh, you will see that you will need to compute only one more leaf. So uh, the, the 9,000 hashes, but multi-threaded and SIMD. Uh, then you will compute at most h over two hashes. When you look up, uh, you will compute some hashes, and then you will forget nodes past their lifetime. And you can again, you can all only release the signature after you've done you've done this dutifully, because if not, you risk, of course. Uh, repeating the state. So thank you. And as a gift, there's a, an, in, an intermediate state of the, the algorithm. In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.